morning, everyone. Welcome to Philip Securities Research Morning Call. Um, for today, for stock counter updates, we have um, Altimeter Growth Corp. And for macro and sector outlook, we have Singapore REITs, technical outlook, and also um, the usual SG weekly. So without further ado, let me now pass on the time to Natalie for um, SG REITs. Thanks, Vivian. So starting, uh, good morning, everyone. Starting off with Singapore REITs, um, this, we're doing a short write-up just in response to the, the article that came out from the Business Times last week, uh, which actually questioned the value um, proposition or, um, or rather value addition by REITs. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so basically, um, the article came out saying that um, the five REITs that have undergone merger um, in the last few years have not have been value disruptive um, and we look at it from a price point of view so the article was saying that since the since the merger was announced four out of five of the REITs actually are trading now below the price which they initially were trading when the merger was first announced so the article also did say that you know a lot of this was um, this was partly due to you know the circumstances within each sector where, for example, the retail hospitality were greatly hit due to COVID and, you know, there are some headwinds facing the office sector. So, um, and actually, that that mostly explains the reason for this uh, difference in price, uh, yeah, uh, in the way that the, the REITs are trading. So in yellow, we have in yellow, we have uh, FLCT, which is industrial, um, industrial and commercial. Then um, the red line now we have is the REITs index, followed by the light blue line, which is CICT, um, which is a diversified REIT um, holding both retail as well as commercial assets. Um, the green line, we have Escort Residence Trust, which merged with um, Ascenders Hospitality Trust. Both of them are in the hospitality sector. Um, followed by OUECT, which now owns um, both retail as well as hospitality assets. And lastly, the, light, the, the other blue line is by ESR REIT, which is now, uh, which is a, which is focused in which is an industrial focus. So the way to look at this chart, um, the, the lines will begin when when the announcement was the merger announcement was released, and then the triangle is when the merger actually has been completed. So for example, we see that um, for example, the, the orange the orange line, which is OUECT, when the merger was announced, the price actually went upwards, and then after that, um, when when the merger was completed, it continued to trend upwards before it hit COVID, where the price, of course, suffered a decline. Um, okay. So, of course, when all these uh, mergers were announced, uh, scale, lower asset concentration risk, lower cost of borrowing, as well as increased liquidity were the key benefits of the merger that was uh, proposed by the management. And most of the mergers were actually TPU accretive. Um, however, ESR and OUECT mergers were pro forma net NAV dilutive, so net asset value dilutive. And you know, even though um, even though FLCT um, seems to be the one that's trading above the merger announcement price, we see that actually FCT was uh, sorry FLCT was sort of aided by four hundred million in acquisitions post merger. So that actually helped to uh, lift the price as well. And so just remember this um, this chart, for, and I'll show you the, the chart on the next slide where how the sectors are, are actually um, performing. Uh, next slide, please. So this is uh, post-COVID, um, what happened after COVID and how the sectors are trading. So we see the green line here, which is the industrial line. Um, that, is, that is currently trading um, above the pre-COVID price. So in a sense that sort of explains why FLCT is sort of doing better because during the, during the COVID period, the industrials were less affected and also after the COVID period, um, so, so def, because they were less affected, they were still able to you know, continue to acquire creatively even, even throughout the pandemic. And then somewhere in the middle, of course, we have our retail, commercial and our diversified and then followed by our hospitality. So the rest of the sectors were sort of, um, the four out of five weeks, three of them were in these uh, more affected, more COVID affected sectors. And of course, ESR REIT, if you recall, is, it's also trending below the merger announcement price. And that's because of, uh, you know, partly we speculate that it's partly due to um, some of the 
the noise of you know surrounding the failed merger between ESR Reed and Savannah Reed. Okay, so all, all in um, our conclusion is that um, we think that you know these mergers should be uh, should be equitative. It's just that the circumstance and the period of time which which is right now, of course, um, you know, it doesn't really truly reflect the merger proposition. It's still very much clouded by the COVID impact. So that's all for me. I'll now pass the time on to Weiren. Uh, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, um, I should say good morning. Uh, yeah, so um, today uh, it will be slightly longer for my segment. So I'll be sharing some of the, uh, first of all, I'll be sharing uh, the, the longer to shorter time frame for the STI index, and then followed by the individual stock counters that I've picked uh, that, that um, I wish to update you guys on my technical pulse report. All right, so without further ado, let's look at the monthly chart of the STI first. So uh, first of first up, I assume my 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 views for the SDI right, uh, remain the same, um, more or less the same as the, what I shared during a Q1 and then the recent Q2 at the start of April. So hence, uh, we look at the larger money chart right. Uh, we are still seeing some more room for the upside, limited. Okay, as you can see, the resistance zone highlighted in red. Okay, so that resistance zone actually is a is a form of like. Uh, uh, a reminder that for us that hey, okay yes um the the market is approaching to its high and then we should be wary about it okay um uh, and then another thing to consider is uh if you look at the larger symmetrical triangle we are actually in a potential five wave pattern all right so a b c has been completed now we are in the d lake of the wave so hence i think in longer term um by the end of two, uh, 2021 I foresee uh, STI hitting 3,500 uh, region, okay? So, uh, but with that, and then after that, there will be some uh, major correction back to the support zone, uh, and then recover, or it could actually break the 3,500, and then next year, 2022, then you will edge up to uh, near the high uh, in 2007 and 2000, uh, 2007, all right? Which is the highest point at which was never broken. For the past 11 years okay so the next slide on the weekly chart okay uh, the sti uh immediate weekly chart we can see that okay um price actually uh has h higher okay so um it, it actually breaks the down the immediate downtrend line already so and then you form a series of higher high and higher low and uh with that right um i i'm kind of, um I, I'm kind of like strongly bullish, despite the fact that right previously, all right, uh, during the Q2 um, sharing, I thought that uh, based on the shooting star uh, formation at the resistance zone one, uh, which, which was at um, 3,200 at 1.76 region, uh, it might face a correction, uh, a throwback back to the support zone uh, around 3,054. Uh, Seventh uh, region level as a support zone and before aging up higher again. But I think this time round, I think the 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 STI was going to hit higher back to resistance zone two, and the upper bound of it is at three four 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 point six one, uh, which is the Fibonacci extension uh, of the first series of the higher high and higher low. Uh, you can see the um, there's a report uh, I issued this morning. You can may refer to it. Uh, however, I think that uh, this morning STI. Uh, H up again um, is in response to the daily Marubuzu candle as well. All right, so uh, also the weekly candle strike back. Okay, um, initially it closed below resistance zone one, and then after that it it, it, it strike back with a piercing light, piercing line formation light candle, and then therefore I think that uh, this week uh, we will be seeing uh, SDI break the upper zone of the resistance zone one, and then. Briefly, I think this Friday, let's see if we can hit 3295.70 or not. All right. So next uh, on the next slide, next slide, uh, which is the daily chart. Uh, I have included the Ichimoku uh, indicator uh, because I want to let you guys know that um, although the uptrend is still ongoing uh, based on the Ichimoku handle, like the lagging span is above the candle, um, prices is trending strongly above the Kumo, the cloud, and then uh Tenkan Sen and Kijun Sen is uh, like uh, well in sync. But you can see closely, you monitor it. Uh, actually, you can see both the Senko Span A and Senko Span B, which comprise of the Kumo or the Cloud, uh, has really flattened, flattened out, especially Senko Span A. 
the 26th period forward. So hence, um, there is a possibility that um, even as upside, I think uh, we will be um, uh, a bit, um, the momentum will be slowing down um, actually. Okay, and then another thing is, I think the maximum target we'll be reaching is three to six something uh, before there's a, uh, there's a minor correction before we go back to what we have shared uh, during the weekly time frame. Okay, so hence, yeah, so this is um, what for the SDI. So the next one I'll be sharing is the comfort that group. So comfort that group on uh, generally, generally, I'm still maintaining what I've shared during my technical post report, uh, you can refer from at stocksbnb.com. Okay, so on the next slide, I'll show you the, the, the chart. Okay, so comfort that rule as of now. All right, uh, I think the price actually has a bit of slight gap down, but as of now, it actually is trending at 1.82. Uh, so if you maintain above that uh, uh, after 1 p.m., then we can safely say that, okay, so for the rest of the day, I think we are seeing the comfort that rule breaking on the upside. Uh, like because first of all, I think the shortfall which is marked by the curve, uh, bottom, uh, above the resistance zone, uh, which is marked in red. Okay, so this curve, all right, uh, actually in uh indicate that um price is uh on the shortfall and looking out to break for uh break higher high. So hence and plus the 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 price has really broken off the bullish flag. Hence, um, if it breaks and sustain a close. For two periods today and tomorrow, I think the we are we are kind of like set for the for the time being for the upside, uh, and then we can achieve our target. All right. So next one will be um the next slide. I will be Gunting Singapore. So Gunting Singapore. Uh, initially this morning, uh, I was like, and last week I was a bit wary. Um, first of all, why? Because on the next slide, uh, show the the chart is that. Um, price actually um uh, re revert back to the mean reversion the mean of the support zone one. Uh, last Friday was I saw the like before lunch I saw a very strong candle but uh when closing it shows a um uh, a doji like pattern. Although right now um Gunting has a very strong bullish bar, uh but it's not confirmed. So we got to wait until uh after lunch or the the closing hour at five. Uh, 16 or 5 18 p.m. when, when the SGI close for trading, then we can we can know that okay, then that will be a morning star on the support zone. All right, but even if there's a support, uh, the morning star on the support zone, um, 0 0.925 uh, of the uh, crucial resistance of the flag need to be broken, which I have already circled out. All right, so if that fails to break, okay. Then after that, I, I think the price will actually uh, revert back lower to support zone two uh, before a rebound. All right, so uh, and then you can see that um, actually price has really trend uh, edge below the um, the the twenty two day moving average. So hence um, I'm a bit wary of this. So unless price at this week it it close revert back higher above the twenty two day moving average, then I will consider uh, okay a buy. Uh, that will, I increase the confidence of the bullish sentiment. All right. So this is my view on comfort that will So uh, uh, Gunting, sorry. So on the next slide, okay. Uh, next talk will be city development. So city development. Uh, I'm still very bullish despite the fact that today uh it closed with a like a, a bearish candle. Uh, it start off with a bearish candle, but right now it it actually have a doji like pattern. Although it's still in red. So um, I have shown the, on the chart, uh, actually um, Pfizer is still trending within the bullish flag and within the resistance support zone between $7.99 to $8.10. So hence, I think Sydney development has um, has um, a, a potential to actually go up higher um, unless it breaks lower by uh, on Wednesday. Then um, we will see that support zone. We will see likely the support zone two will be well supported there. Okay, so uh, you can see that uh, actually the today, if you can open your chart uh, for the live chart, you can see that the twenty two day moving average is uh, uh, price is actually testing and rebounded above the twenty two day moving average as we are speaking now. And then you can see over a fifty day moving average and the two hundred day moving average. 
Uh, the 50 day moving average is attempting to cross above the 20 day, 200 day moving average, uh, which is right, be, right beside the second bullish crossover. So you can see that uh, 50 day uh, highlighted in blue is uh, aging up uh, forward, aging up higher. So if that is to happen, then we will be seeing a strong uh, up confirmation on the upside. All right. So the next slide. I'll be HRNet. HRNet will be uh, uh, is a report that I recently just um, released. Um, so first of all, I think it, the series of higher high and higher immediate uptrend has been really formed. Uh, although the, the general longer dominant trend is still bearish uh, based on the weekly chart. Uh, right now we focus on the uh, on the reversal because um, uh, I, I mean on the, the, the bullish uptrend, you can see that immediate uptrend has been formed. Higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low. And then there's a standing triangle throughout. And then, okay, so the next thing is, um, despite the fact that um, that it breaks off, breaks uh, above the ascending triangle, uh, and then the bearish candle as uh, a strike back, okay? Um, today, I think right now, I think price um, that's, uh, is a supporter at 22 day moving average. Um, price is actually making a comeback attempting to break the highest high again. Um, so in meter target, I, I'm still eyeing at 0 0.705 and then subsequently at 0 0.756, okay? Um, if that fails, then I think 0 point, um, 0 0.615 615 will be the next support zone um, to be, to, 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 to give the, H, the stock, HRNet, a very strong rebound on the upside, okay? So, yeah. So on the next one, uh, nano firm. So nano firm, uh, I know that this this is a stock that I I recommended for the uh, Q2. So it's very uh a Q2 outlook, and then um, uh, but I I'm I I need to be I I need to let you know the worst case scenario is that uh, nano firm may go into range uh like a double three corrective wave of the of the um of the Elliott wave theory. So hence, you can look ahead, although an hour flow is on the upside now, uh, target resistance zone one between $5.30 and $5.58 remain the target, so which is top of the wedge pattern. Okay, so that target uh, will face some of like some sort of correction down, and then uh, you'll test the immediate, sub immediate resistance level at 5.10. Then that immediate resistance level at 5.10 will be the uh, resistance support level. Okay, so if that holds, then we won't see any double three, and then we will see that our uh, price is going to uh, move up higher to target uh, resistance zone two. Okay, overall, I think based on Elliott wave theory, um, I think if even if there's a prolonged cor correction, the worst case scenario is that price uh, revert back to four point four two to four point three, uh, four point three two region uh, as a support zone, and then uh, rebound higher, and then that will be the wave three of the. Uh, elongated wave cow. Okay, so this uh, narrow firm, regardless of any angle you look at, is a very uh, is a very powerful stock that we, that in in technical terms, um, that is uh, can target for uh, uh, a third wave. Okay, so it will be it will be quite strong. So let's see how how it perform. All right. So uh, next one is will be the uh, DBS group. Uh, DBS group. Currently testing this uh, resistance level. Okay, so the crucial resistance level, there is some sort of like bearish candle right now, a small one, uh, as we are talking right now. So if that crucial resistance level don't clear, you'll form a potential head and shoulder pattern. And then uh, likely it will likely fall and then uh, fall and then uh, rebound at around $27. Okay, but um, my personal conviction is that uh, it's likely to break the crucial resistance this week and then target and then met our target uh, of $39.50 and then subsequently $30 uh, and above uh, maybe $30.64. Okay, uh, reason why. Okay, so if you look back at 15 um, March, hey, let me see, is it 15 March? Uh, 9 March, sorry. 9 March, uh, there's an island reversal top uh, pattern, then uh, a, a strong bearish candle can, came down. But the bullish candle recovered on the 11th of May, uh, 11th of March, sorry. And then they formed a kind of a hikake pattern. And then uh, finally, where the day I, on the, on the 17th March, 
at the 18 March, I'm going to uh, I release a report says that uh, price is going to pay sharp higher. Uh, first thing you can refer to my report uh, because there's a PKK pattern. Uh, price is supported at 27.75 to 27.65 that, that at the time, and then therefore hence the recovery on the upside. So, uh, and then you can see the, the Ichimoku, the lagging span, um, a price actually, uh, the lagging span actually broke below the uh, the candle after it get down, uh, after the island reversal. Uh, but it subsequently went above the candle once again. So hence, I think this will be like some sort of false bullish signal. So um, I'm still very, I'm still quite bullish on uh, limited bullish on DBS group. All right. So on the next slide, uh, with ascender. So ascenders right now, uh, will be a very strong. Uh, it has actually break the resistance level at three three point zero nine to three point one zero. Uh, right now it's trending at 3.10. Uh, earlier on was trending at 3.11. So um, can, uh, if you can look look closer, I always like to espouse the fact that uh, I always support the fact that uh, when there's multiple testing of a uh, certain resistance level, um, there is a, a weakening of the resistance level. So hence, um, I I feel that uh, ascenders have really much room to grow. Uh, based on the technical perspective. So uh, if we able to break $3.20, then we are seeing for a strong, ready, we are in for a trip for upside uh, once again. Okay, so if you look at that, uh, it broke off a falling wedge, although not very strong, uh, but it's well supported by the ascending triangle. Okay, uh, which is kind of like bullish uh, pattern uh, going forward. Okay, uh, so in the next slide, uh, Jaffa, Jaffa is um, Jaffa a bit tricky. Uh, new too. Okay, so Jaffa on, on the chart is actually shows a very large bullish flag uh, that's waiting to break out. Uh, you can see that price as prices as actually like like a center street uh, is testing the resistance level. Uh, but this somehow is the gap zone uh, that which was happened was happened in eight of March. So price reverse and then uh, subsequently test and close uh, attempt to close the gap. So hence. I think this um this breakaway gap or the bearish um is is kind of like exhaustion gap for the it become an exhaustion gap for the uh for the bearish trend. So hence I'm I'm really quite positive that um that Jaffa will be able to break the bullish fact. However, if it doesn't, there is a tendency that uh 8.50 0.850 um support zone uh, will be very well supported. All right, so there remains, um, so in, in other words, there remain a downside risk, but uh, overall I'm quite bullish on it. Okay, so the next slide will be top glove. So I think this one will be my last slide. So top glove, um, although top glove recently recovered quite a significant amount, uh, but I think there will be some sort of like a correction um upon reaching uh, above two dollars to two dollar and four cents uh reason being uh first of all i think why why i uh, why i support the fact that uh top glove is going for the outside uh, same as other uh, glove company they exhibit the same kind of movement uh throughout there's some some sort of strong correlation between them uh you can look at the technical price action you can look at uh between a and c um the there is like inverted head and shoulder formation like and then uh, multiple testing among the resistance zone between $1.73 to $1.82. Hence, um, this will actually cause the um, price to actually, um, um, uh, I mean, cause the resistance zone to be weakened and then price actually will likely to break uh, upside on the upside. But however, the major resistance zone at $2.04 uh, remain a crucial level and I highly Think that uh, that will be the key selling level, and then uh, the key buying area, the the one that uh, we are looking for a strong rebound is between one dollar and one five to one dollar and three one dollar and three five cents. All right, uh, that will be the Z wave going forward. Okay, so with that, I think I pass my time to Paul uh, for the L L ultimate group call. Okay, Paul, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, th thanks, Peter. Uh, so we're going to do something different today. Um, uh, I don't cover the US stocks, but because of all the, the headlines over Grab and also some ridiculous comments from FA that should buy spec because the trade is a trading fever. But anyway, 
uh, I'll just run through just some slides on on what is a spec in, in, in a bit more detail. So, uh, so, so sorry for those that already are quite familiar. And then we'll just give you some some of the, the, the terms re regarding the details regarding the grab uh, holdings transaction. Uh, do note that they don't actually, there's only a slight deck, so they actually don't give like very comprehensive details, but I'm just using whatever information I could get from the slide deck. Thanks. Uh, next slide. Okay, so, so uh, again, sorry, I know most of you may already know what I suspect, but just uh, just for the rest that may not uh, truly understand it, and, and because you no know, spec may be eventually introduced in Singapore. Okay, it's plenty, you can think of it like a default free convertible bond, but anyway, uh, so basically in, in the US, the specs are usually uh, issued at $10, uh, class A shares. Uh, that's on the top left, uh, top left hand corner the, under the public offer. Then the peculiarities will be number one, they will give you uh, warrants. So you are entitled to free warrants or sometimes they might structure rights, but for this particular deal, they're giving you uh, free warrants one quarter. So that means if you, if you, if you buy, subscribe to five shares, then you will get one free warrant. Uh, and these are exercisable you know, after the transaction or after 12 months. And the price is always about uh, 11.50. So, so that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, again, uh, just deviate a little bit. Then the sponsor will also subscribe for some warrants, uh, but they have to pay for it. It's not free. They have to pay, uh, 11, like for this instance, 11 million. And the purpose is to pay for the cost. Uh, the cost of this deal is uh, about 5.5%. So about nine, to pay for the 9 million plus to, to, uh, of, of no transaction called lawyer fee and so forth. Uh, and the reason is because uh, the, the number one peculiar thing is that you get free warrants. The second peculiarity is the that you can redeem at par. So at any time you, you don't like, you, you suddenly decide you don't like this spec, you can just redeem back at par. So that's why we call it like a default free because you can go back and surrender your shares and then you get back the $10. But because there was, there was that 9 million cost, right? So the sponsor has to top up 11 million, for this case, like 11 million so that when you go in and top up and surrender your shares, there's enough money in the trust account. Okay, so then if I go on to part C, the cost. So why is the founder doing this? So the founder or sponsor, uh, they usually get free shares, uh, 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 that 12 and a half cent at 0 0.001, so it's free. Uh, to, uh, you know, so uh, the, the, the point is that this is, uh, this is a huge amount because uh, like you say, this deal is about maybe 50 million, 45 million plus, uh, uh, but they are going to get like 12 and a half million so it's about 20% of all the shares. So they're gonna get 20% free shares. Uh, and, and But they can only exercise these shares when the IBC uh, basically means when the transaction is done. Uh, the other red box there is just the commission, uh, uh, which is 3.5, but this commission, you, which is huge, I mean, it's like 15 million, right? You, uh, but it's only uh, paid when the transaction is done. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm confusing some more, but Okay, so the key point is the one, the redemption rights. So like I said, the unique thing is you get free warrants, then you can redeem at par uh, under the redemption rights uh, box. And then you, you then the, the other thing is that when there is a transaction, uh, technically it's called a merger, but you know, it's an acquisition. So technically, even you, when there's a transaction identified, then it has to be done within 24 months or otherwise the spec will close as bullet point number two. Uh, then you can vote. So all the shareholders can vote uh, by ordinary shareholding, you know, 50% more. Uh, okay, so this is the basic structure. Uh, there's one more thing at the bottom. You see that pipe, uh, sorry if it's a bit small. Uh, pipe is just a fancy name to call it. They call it forward purchase or pipe or placement, uh, just a placement agreement. Uh, the reason is because uh, the studies have shown that most, most specs, uh, roughly two-thirds, I mean, depending on the vintage, uh, they actually get redeemed. That means most on average, every spec, like two thirds of the money is redeemed. So most people just buy, then they redeem the $10 just to get the free warrant. So sometimes there's not enough money in the spec. So they need a placement agreement to, to be on standby. Uh, because some uh, acquisitions, they need some minimum money inside the spec. Otherwise you can't do it. Uh, you can't go ahead with the transaction. So a good spec should have a, a big enough uh, spec, uh, a big enough, sorry, pack. So for Altimeter, uh, some of the partners you have is of course the sponsor himself and also John Soros, the GS Capital, you know, John Soros son of for, for whatever, for whatever in worth is, I mean, just for interesting, that's, that's, that's what it stands for, like JS. So the reason is that placement in the event of uh, sufficient funds. 
So anyway, just to summarize some of the, the unique points of the spec, uh, is that number one, the, uh, the bullet points on the bottom left is uh, that you get free warrants, uh, re redeemable at par. So virtually default free, you can go in, then you don't like the deal, then you just take back your money. And you get, then you can vote for the merger if you, if, if you are still around. I mean, most people already exited. And then it, it can be expensive. So the studies also show, you can lead, go through the link at the, the, under the papers there, that most times uh, you make money when you subscribe, but usually the performance can kind of wane down or, or you can, the weakness is when the whole deal is con consummated, then you actually, most times there's some underperformance there. And the fourth bullet point is, uh, most mo specs, two thirds of it, uh, you get redemption. Uh, there's a lot of redemption. On average, every spec, like two thirds of the money they, they collected, people just redeem it. Okay, I, I hope that clarifies. I'm sorry, the font's a bit small. We just try to cram everything. Uh, next slide. Okay, so anyway, we'll go through the deal. Uh, don't worry, there's a lot of numbers. Uh, we just that I wanted to put the details in so that, uh, because most of the, there's a lot of publicity, but better to just get the details. Uh, I'll, I'll just run through. Uh, so on the left, as you know, Grab was listed, I mean, was founded in 2012 as my taxi. Uh, no, the, the, the good thing is that they are like almost in 400 cities. Uh, so that, that's really, and an in eight countries. I think we all know what they do at deliveries, mobility. I won't go through this. So the market cap of this deal is uh, 39.5 billion. Uh, and this equity value bridge is it's just, you know, they like all these fancy terms, but just think of it like net cash or net debt. Uh. So uh, you, you want, you can look at the details below. Then that's how you get the EV. Uh, yeah, it's a very really big term, but anyway. Okay, then the, the important part, it will be on the right-hand side, uh, the shareholding structure. So uh, this is assuming the whole deal is completed at $10. Uh, so this is at $10. Uh, the key thing is that existing spec shareholders, your shareholding is only 1%. So right now, the, the spec, probably the shares out there is 50 million. But when the deal is done, there's going to be uh, almost 4 billion shares. So there's going to be a lot of shares out there. And most of the shares will be the, to the existing uh, Grab shareholders. Uh, the rest I won't go through. I know there's a pipe here. And I won't run too detailed for that. But the key thing is that whatever, my worry is that whatever price you see now, the, the, the ultimate trading at 12 something, it's not reflective because this is only 50 million float. Now. When the 4 billion float come out, that's when you really see the, the real demand supply. And under the lockup period, the existing grab there, uh, D means list, uh, listing day. That means they are assuming the deal gets, gets completed on the 19th and the stock trades uh, after the merger at D. So on the transaction day itself, almost 28%, almost 30% of the float is available for sale. And, and that is my worry too. And another 30%, you see the D plus 50, that means transaction D plus 50 days, 60 days. There's, there's also a lot of shares coming up on the pipe. Uh, I'll explain later why this is the worry. Uh, the bottom is just the estimated kind of shareholding structure. Uh, so, so we run through the next slide. Uh, we'll give our comments on the deal later. Uh, uh, this is just some key financials. Uh, not very detailed or uh, they don't have, but uh, I'll just run through this for your information. Uh. So the, the G, uh, actually it's GMV, uh, not GWB. Uh, GMV basically means the, the amount of transactions. I know if let's say we go to Grab now and then we, we order food $20, so your GMV is $20. Uh, so you can see that it has been growing, but the mobility took a hit uh, in, in the red box. You can see mobility dropped from 5.7 billion US to 3.2 and uh, just because of the pandemic, I uh, know because of the pandemic, uh, you know, there's less, less cars, less like taxi, uh, just similar to taxis, they got hit. So, so the, that's why the, the GMV was flat uh, and was down about 44%. Uh, if you go to the bottom, uh, um, the problem I have is that a lot of the, the headlines, the, the, I don't know, the, all the noise out there is a lot of it, they always refer to this thing, adjusted net revenue. But do note that uh, adjusted net revenue is not really the revenue. Uh, they always had to put a lot of spin to it. But the real revenue is uh, you have to take out another 400 million for this case uh, because they excluded this thing called excess in incentives. So it's like uh, incentives that are loss making that they paid. So they said, oh, this one is, doesn't, it's not happening. This one won't, won't occur. Right? You know, this thing is going to occur. So the real revenue is actually 1.2 billion, not the 1.6 billion that they could, you know, they, they keep on uh, flashing out there. 
So the real revenue is 1.2 billion, something to take note of. Uh, of course, that is coming off. They used to subsidize like 400 million, 500, but they were still about 400 million. That means these are like loss making incentives that they do. Okay, and anyway, we, uh, again, sorry, there's a lot of details. Uh, then the thing on the right, I'm, I'm just giving you some highlights. So they are a loss making company. Uh, in 2020, they lost like 2.7 billion. But note that half the losses came from interest expense from the preference shares. And the good thing about this deal for Grab at least is that I think all, all these convert, uh, preference shares will become equity. So overnight, uh, uh, they will, there is no expense. So you can see that they, there is a good chance they could actually turn profitable by 2023 because uh, there is no, the interest expense will disappear. The, the one in the red box, the 1.4 billion, uh, you can consider it as debt. Lang. So they, they got like a convertible debt or convertible bond, the interest is 1.4 billion. So it's quite a nice juicy interest expense. Yeah, okay. Uh, in terms of free cash flow, uh, the good thing also was that uh, despite the, the weakness in mobility, their free cash flows actually improved in the sense that they lost less. Huh? They, and and the, the cash from operations was actually almost turned to the black. You can see the one in red, minus 2.7.7. So cash flow actually quite good in the sense that even though it was a very bad year for mobility, but deliveries did well and, and, and they did quite well for the cash. Uh, just one last bullet point on the financials. So since their inception in 2012, they, they lost about 10.4 billion. I mean, I mean, one way to read it is that uh, if you lose 10.4 billion, I can also bill you one super app. But of course, the trick is how do you raise so much money? Up? I can also bill you a nice app if I lose 10 billion. But that to me is also a positive because it's going to be hard to, to replicate. So uh, the rest is just for your reference. But the key points about the financials is that uh, their net loss will narrow uh, be, uh, because the, there's a 10.7 billion uh, debt or convertible bond that will turn to equity. And then as a result, they have lower interest expense. So financially, uh, cash flow got no issue or they, they are very strong, especially after this capital raising. Uh, and then the adjusted net revenue, uh, again, just a reminder, uh, just take it with a pinch of salt, it's not really truly the revenue. Okay, the next slide will be, I guess, more important, the valuations and, and our comments. Okay, uh, in terms of valuations, uh, the table on the left, you can see that on the price to actual sales, uh, uh, grab at $10, and not the current price, which is $12, at $10, the trading at 33 times price to sale. So obviously, it's, it's, it is expensive. Uh, and only comparable, like Uber is 10 times, Lyft, the only comparable is a, a C. I think C one is, I, I'm not sure how, but I'm just took it from, from Bloomberg, but it's like 30 times. I'm not sure how real it is. But so when we compare to the other like Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, GrabHub, it, it is very expensive. Uh, uh, again, doesn't mean it's not good, but I'm just saying it is really, really expensive on the relative measure. And if you use uh, adjusted sales, uh, which you know is not, you still got to adjust for the, for the, for the sales because of the excess incentives that I mentioned. And also do note that this is at $10, uh, not the $12. So you buy now is even more expensive because you've got to add in another 20% to the valuations. Uh, the one at the bottom, just for your reference, that's EV to sales. Uh, in their slides, uh, they, are, they, are, they are using EV to growth and all that uh, based on the growth. But uh, again, no, we want to take the pure number. Again, just for if you want to refer, the, this, uh, you can go to the Altimeter website. Okay, uh, so I'll, I'll just run through the comments. I uh, don't want to take too long. So the positives for this grab deal is, is, is more longer term. I think there's very low penetration in Southeast Asia. Uh, deliveries is only 11% penetrated. You no know, mobility is only 3%. So the longer term picture, the, you know, the story of total addressable market is there. The potential is obviously there. And, and then when they raise money, they, there is a good chance they can be the dominant guy. Uh, the other positive is the conversion of the, the debt to equity. So that's a positive because uh, you won't be burdened by the interest expense. Uh, the other operational positive is that uh, so far, you know, they are, they are set, they are a super app or at least they are, they're going to try to be a super app. Uh, so far, only half of the transactions, only one service. So there's potential for people you not know, to use, more people to use two services, three services. So there is that potential. And the other interesting thing is that the, the customer typically, once you use Grab, after three years, you tend to like double whatever spending you have on Grab. So that's another positive. So the traction and so forth. 
And of course, my favorite is that they lost 10.4 billion US. I, I mean, you want to compete with them. Anybody who wants to start up now and compete with them, you get ready to lose 10 billion. So to me, that's a huge barrier to entry. And they, of course, raised another 4 billion. So these are the positives. But for me, the negative is, is just the valuation uh, and the amount of shares coming up. So number one, uh, it is expensive. Right? You look at the valuations, it's like, like far ahead of everyone else. Uh, and number two is there's a lot of shares coming up. Uh, and, there's, and, and the Grab shareholders that like I showed you earlier, uh, their cost is low. I do not know the exact amount, but if you look at the table at the top, uh, the valuations, uh, the last time they raised money in March, which was two years ago, Grab was only valued. Uh, again, these are all press. I, I can't verify how accurate it is, but this is based on press articles. Uh, the valuations was 10 to 14. So the most expensive, uh, the, so the most expensive block of shares was valued at ten to fourteen, and now they're coming out at forty. So everybody is going to be the ninety. There's going to be like ninety percent of of shareholders that have got like cost that is like I don't know fifty percent or maybe 70 percent cheaper than you if you come in now. So and there's a lot of shares coming out. So that's my worry that uh, if you come in now. Again, the potential is there, the, the outlook is there, but just that there's a lot of shares that could be, you know, very far, far cheaper than you. Because if I, if you look at the media reports, some uh, 2017 vintage, some were valued at grab at only six billion, so so their cost could be I don't know two dollars, three dollars, you know, some four dollars, five dollars, but you're coming in at twelve dollars. So uh, so that's my worry. Uh, again, I do not know what's the cost. Every every tranche, every series has different funding, and of course. Uh, we are pricing everything on forecasts, uh, which you know we got uh, limited uh, visibility. Okay, uh, I need this is my last slide. Uh, 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 again, this is going to be the last time I talk about Grab, unless they do a secondary listing. Uh, so uh, just for everyone's info, uh, again, there's very limited information given. Uh, they just gave us a couple of slides, so I just compiling all the slides data and showing you uh, what is the most uh, the thing. Just that I find it a bit expensive at the present price. Uh. Okay, uh, next slide, we go to our usual Singapore weekly. Oh, oh, okay, uh, okay. In, in terms of this week, just run through as usual, some of the key macros that came up for Singapore. Uh, we got our residential transaction, which is a really strong number, is like up double from the year ago. And even if you strip up, because it, we shouldn't compare anything to 2020, because 2020 was a this is an unusual year. You compare anything to 2020, all the numbers will look high. But even when we compare to 2019, the first half of 2019, uh, the average monthly sales was about 700 or 670. But so far this year, the average monthly, you can see the 3574 divided by 3. So on average, we are selling about 1,000 units. So this is quite high, even compared to pre-pandemic. Uh, we Singapore also uh, reported their exports. Uh, it is an amazingly strong number. Our exports is an all-time high of in March, about almost 18 billion. Uh, it is plus 12%. Uh, if you compare to March, it's even more incredible, like up 31%. So exports are really strong uh, for Singapore's like record numbers. Uh, the, uh, our ready mix concrete numbers wasn't so good. So construction is still a, a bit slow, although it's improving, but uh, year to date is still down about 14%. Uh, I think our GDP is just for reference. I think we all know that won't go, won't go through, won't go, won't go through that. Uh, the one that's pulling down the, our GDP headline is uh, construction. Uh, if you go on to retail sales, uh, for the US, uh, sorry, I'm just jumping to the US now. Our US retail sales is also an, another amazing, uh, another stupendous number. It's like up 19%. Uh, so if you think for the quarter, it's up 11. And, and just to put into context, uh, if you compare to 2019 numbers, uh, it is up 18%. Uh, so you, you can say the, the base effect because 2020 was weak, but even if you remove the base effect, uh, the retail sales in, in US is really supercharged. Uh, and you look at 2017, 2019, you no, know, retail sales in US normally about 4 to 5%, but so this year's 11% is really, really strong, even if you take out the base effect. Uh, they also came up with the CPI. As, as you all know, right now, we're all on like inflation watch, so-called. Uh, you can see that the inflation is 1.6. Uh, it is the highest in four months, but when we took the number and compared to, again, we're all comparing to pre-pandemic. I'm uh, sorry for the confusion. Uh, uh, pre-pandemic, before the pandemic hit 2019, in the C core CPI was 2%. So in 
So, you know, we're having like a, so it was even higher than right now. So we're having like a, almost like a fairy tale kind of like, very strong growth everywhere, but CPI is still quite sub you know? uh, Our technical views is uh, we're still positive on the market, but uh, we think some, maybe some pandemic stocks might get, might get some short-term rally maybe because uh, we'll show you a chart later. The global cases in COVID is actually reaching an all-time high. It's close to breaking the record high again. Uh, so, so that's not a positive. Uh, uh, we'll show you later on some of the weeks ahead, some of the results coming up for Singapore. But this is like Netflix. And that's for your reference. Uh, next slide. Uh, as usual, we will go through the COVID numbers. Um, my worry is the blue line. So this is the global number of cases. You can see it is precariously close to the all-time high we hit in January. Uh, the number now is 731,000 a day. Uh, the all-time high was about 73,000. So there's a good chance when the pandemic is going to hit another new record globally. So that, that's not positive. Uh, the cases coming out, I think, I think we all know is in Japan, Indonesia, uh, sorry, India, Philippines, Japan. Uh, sorry, Thailand, sorry. Uh, next slide. Uh, we're just running through which countries, but you can see most of the epicenter is the emerging emerging markets, emerging countries. Uh, sorry if it's a bit slow, uh, it's small. You can see that India, the cases is now, uh, I don't know, about 100, almost hitting 200,000, the most recent number. You can see the blue line for India is just skyrocketing. Uh, Philippines is also skyrocketing. So you can see that Asia is getting another, I don't know, third uh, major second wave, or I don't know, third wave. Uh, the good thing is, in the in Europe, the cases is still very slow. like UK is amazing. In UK, the cases just collapse, especially with vaccination. So I guess if there's any positive is that the developed countries, the cases is falling dramatically. Uh, next slide. Uh, for Singapore, uh, the numbers did not so good. Uh, we got like eight cases. The week before that was two. So we got a uh, in on 17 April we got like four cases. So. Uh, I wouldn't say it's alarming, but it is going back to the high in February and, and you know, we just relax in 5th April. So hopefully the numbers don't escalate. Otherwise, you know, uh, they might, I mean, uh, we, we do not know about hopefully it doesn't. Otherwise, you might even have to dial back the 5th April kind of relaxation. Uh, Nick, next slide. Uh, okay, uh, this is just illustration of the, the transactions. You can see that uh, for the first quarter 21, we hit 3,005. So these are high numbers. I won't run too, too much. Obviously, the last bullet point is we're going to be good for the agencies. Uh, next, next slide. Uh, just to show you that the external environment, the these are export numbers in Singapore. You can see the blue line, the red line, especially electronics export is just surging. I probably can break uh, a, a new like ten year high growth rate. Uh, the the table on the right is just to show you on just by graph the ready mix concrete since we cover Pan United. Uh, you can see that there's a big rebound, but again, it's still a bit negative. So we hopefully, as, as construction activity uh, continues, we can see this turning to a positive territory. Uh, next slide. Uh, the US, you can see the blue chart on the left of the retail sales in the US is, is like, I don't know, it's like a 10 year high or 15 year high. Uh, then at the same time, the, the inflation numbers are quite subdued. Right? It's, just, it's even below the 2018-2019 levels. Uh, again, this is just for picture, just for your reference if you're interested. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is going to be my last slide. Uh, this, uh, with the results season coming full blown by, by this week, so we just show you some of the results coming out. Uh, the main one, I guess, will be Keppel Corp. Uh, highlighted in yellow will be those stocks that is covered by us, by PSR. Uh, the big stocks will be our first Keppel Corp, you know, Keppel DC, this uh, Maple, Maple Tree Logistics. Uh, again, uh, purely for your reference uh, and, and FCT. And of course, we'll be briefing all these stocks uh, next week uh, in our usual weekly update. Okay, uh, thanks everyone. This is my last slide. I think we can go to Q&A. Thank, thank you, everybody. Uh, turn on your camera when you're answering your uh, questions. Uh, thanks. Uh, Natalie, can you go ahead? Okay, hi. So the first question is for me. Uh, give me a minute. Okay. 
<laughs> yes, okay, thank you, me. Okay, so the question is, uh, which REITs are currently undervalued and has good upside potential and which are your top picks for REITs right now? So for, for the REITs, um, just to recap sectorally, uh, we like the industrial as well as the retail um, subsector. Uh, this is because, of course, the, re the for the retail, there is impending uh, pickup in consumer spending as the economy reopens and more social events actually um, you know, proceed. So that will that will be a that will be a boost to consumer spending. And already the RSI is trending very close to pre-COVID levels, despite the absence of uh, in tourist tourist spending as well as the industrial, because industrial is you know more or less more resilient and there are you know drivers from from the future. Future future centric uh, sectors like your those um, data center type. Yeah. Okay, so uh, in terms of in terms of which REITs we currently like, um, based on our, our on our total upside, we actually like uh, Menu Life as well as uh, Ascenders REIT um, and Fraser Centerpoint Trust. So um, the REIT, the past few months uh, REITs actually had a correction. So um, the prices are still st starting to pick up. Uh, if you recall, we were uh, sharing just now, um, Ascenders is also reaching the, uh, the resistance level. So actually we think that you know, these, it's, still, it's still attractive prices to pick up these REITs and the, and the total returns for these for these three REITs, uh, FCT, Fraser Center Point Trust, Manual Life, as well as Ascenders are close to the uh, more than 20% in terms of total return. Yeah. So other REITs that we also think that uh, you can look at are uh, capital DC as well as uh, prime yeah so those are those are the top picks <clears throat> uh, passing on the time now to Paul for, for Thai Bev. yeah okay thanks uh oh yeah sorry my um this the target price for remains postponed uh, yeah okay um there's really no change in in our if you read our report uh we mentioned that the IPO, even if it does happen, the accretion was about 3%. That means uh, if they did the IPO, at best you will improve the EPS, you know, your earnings whatsoever is only 3%. So it's very really minor and that's assuming a 30 times PE. I, I think it was postponed because they maybe wanted 50 times or 40 times because that was what, you know, remember there was a Blue, uh, uh, Bloomberg article that valued it at 10 billion, which was more like, you know, you more like a dream, a figment imagination, I guess. But anyway, I think uh, we have no deep insights to the to the deal, but I think they wanted a much higher valuation and probably they wanted, 40, my guess are 30, 40 times and that didn't materialize, especially with the COVID resurging in, 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 in Thailand. Uh, but we still, we, are, we still like the stock. I think the, it is it's based purely, number one, on a recovery. Because as you recall last year, in April, uh, th there was an alcohol ban. I mean, nobody can consume alcohol. So you're not going to have it this year. And so far, they've not really shut down the whole of Thailand. What they've done is mainly uh, just just close off uh, the night nightlife. Uh, sadly, of course, oh, we are very sad for that. But uh, I think what they have done is just shut down some of the nightlife. But I think the recovery story is still underway for them because there was a one-month shutdown, number one. And number two, our target price is, is based on uh, 18 times PE, which is their historical average. And you know, 18 times for a consumer stock isn't like very stretched. So, so that's why we no change in our target price. The 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 IPO was uh, sorry, uh, it's a very long answer, but the IPO was more like a nice to have. If it didn't happen, which I mean, it was just a, a reason to de gear because they, they are they are very highly geared, not highly geared, but not the interest expense, I think is about 200 million. So they're just trying to reduce that. But it doesn't really change much of our thesis. Our thesis wasn't on them doing an IPO. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah sorry, it's a very long answer, but I mean, yeah. I hope that helps. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll sorry. I'll just run through on, on the Singtel one. Yeah. So, so sorry, we Okay. I apologize. That I didn't go through the City Group uh, report. I, I didn't know what they said, but. My my only thing is that um you know the bulk of Singtel's value is in the list code. Is I mean when you do the sum of parts, uh, maybe two third of it is actually comes from their listed entity like Bati. Uh, so unless they play around with that, even if they do list maybe their enterprise business, uh, the incremental uplift, I'm just get pulling a number on maybe 10-15%, percent will not be that 
really material. Uh, because bulk of the value, when you look at Singtel, two-thirds of it is from their, their, their Lisco, you know, the, their Telcom cell, their state in Telcom cell, you know, unless they move around on their foreign associates, uh, any improvement won't be that big. If you want to pay restructuring, I think for me, StarHub would be a better one. Because I think StarHub has a very attractive cyber security business, uh, Ensign. Uh, I think if they kind of list Star, uh, Ensign or, or restructure Ensign, I think there's a lot of hidden value inside the Ensign. Because you know, Ensign is almost like cyber security arm for a lot of the, the you know, how to say, uh, the GLCs and so forth. So I thought restructuring would be more beneficial for StarHub. I mean, my own view, I don't have the details, but rather than play it through Singtel, yeah, I, I hope that that helps. I mean, if you're playing a restructuring on on, on a restructuring angle for telcos, yeah. Thank, thanks for that. Yeah, uh, sorry, Avery, you can you can go ahead. Yeah, okay. So, uh, thank you, thank you, Paul and uh, and Natalie. So, um, there's quite a number of technical questions. So, um, I'll just go through some of them. Okay, so um, there's some question on Baba just now. So, um, okay, all I can say that for Baba, all right, um, this resistance has broken, but it's kind of like a false breakout. So, um, if price is going to break 236.69 and then fail to sustain and close above here, then we are definitely looking this uh this leg of the downside will we'll actually be, be looking at um uh, after that all right okay so yeah so that's for baba um i know there's a quite a number of singtel question and today i think uh, i think kai ben so i will actually go through all of them so uh for singtel i think last i think two web two webinars ago um there are some there is someone who asked about uh, singtel so uh, this is my view. So hence, uh, like last that 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 webinar, I think that uh, I mentioned that this resistance zone at two point four nine to two point five two has been tested multiple times. It's going to be broken, and yes, it, it broke last Friday. All right, and today it sustained the rally, and then uh, yeah. Uh, so the next resistance zone at two point six four and two point six nine will be the ultimate target. All right, so same as Yang Zixiang. Uh, but Yang Zijian, I think he has really met my resistance target uh, for now. Okay, so for, for Singtel, yes, uh, this is what I view in mind. Uh, this resistance level will be the uh, crucial... Um, let me see if everybody can see my screen. Yeah, okay, so yes, thank you. Let's see. Okay, so yep. Okay, so uh, this is um, okay. So where am I? Okay, so uh, for Singtel, yes, uh, we are looking for the uh, additional upside on on that. All right. So for the next one, I think uh, Thai Beth. Um, Thai Beth. Okay, right now, uh, do they Thai Beth get below the uh, head and shoulder uh, resistance line? Okay, so um, and then it it, it recovered after uh, touching base at the two hundred day moving average. Okay, so uh, I believe there will be an upside to fill a gap and then followed by a downside uh, to this level. So this support zone at 0 0.635 to 0 0.650 remains my, uh, what do you call it? Um, my ultimate uh, rebound zone, all right? So this is what I have in mind for that, all right? Especially head and shoulder and etc. okay? So this is what I have for high best, okay? Uh, okay, so sing down, I've answered. Okay. So Thai Bev, yeah, let me see. Very sustainable by price. Okay, Yoma, Yoma is the next question. Okay, Yoma, I'm looking at the larger time frame chart. Uh, sadly to say, I don't think Yoma is uh, having a strong momentum to sustain the rally above. So hence, um, Look at daily chart. I think it has hit my uh, secondary, um, the lower support zone. Uh, but you can see that the rally wasn't that strong. Uh, so if this level 1.0.145 doesn't sustain, then we will see a further drop uh, for Yoma strategy. Okay. 
All right, so uh, Yang Zijiang is the next favorite hot topic. Uh, Yang Zijiang has finally reached my um, resistance zone at 1.34 to 1.38. And then uh, given this strong bullish candle, uh, I believe that this will be sustained. We will have a breakout um, in this way. So um, I'm forcing this out of like uh, a movement until 1.618 uh, or $1.49. So my new target will be actually at 1.49. Uh, target, all right, okay. Okay, so next one, Luma. okay, so I, uh, ascenders are answered. So I'm doing uh, maple tree lock. So maple tree, uh, maple tree, not much. Uh, v shaped recovery. I think long term wise, I'm targeting this uh, resistance zone at 2.07. Okay, nothing much change from the last week and the week before. Okay, uh, however, I think Maple Tree Industrial Trust, uh, there's, a, there's a strong reaction of selling at a resistance zone between $2.80 to $2.84. Hence, uh, if this one is bro broken, then we'll be targeting 2.93 to 2.96. Um, with the next resistance level. All right. Okay. So next one thing, this one is CSE Global. Uh, CSE Global um, flag uh, has been fulfilled. Um, re entry buy price, can, we can look at uh, 0.545 as support. Uh, this will be the area of like interest, or you can look slightly higher 0 0.555, triple five. Okay. All right. Okay, so Yang Zixiang. Okay, Sam Kok. Okay, uh, Union Gas was okay. So Union Gas um uh, has gone gone up a lot. Uh, Union Gas is the one that uh I can't figure out what's the technical where's the direction is going on. So hence I'm apologize for that. Okay, and then uh next one is Yang Zixiang and Shed. Um. Okay, so uh, Sam Court Industry. So uh, yes, this is my Sam Court Industry. So Sam Court Industry, my report is still valid. Okay, uh, the buy report, uh, not the sell one. The sell one has already been stopped out. So uh, Sam Court has already reached uh, my next target price. I think it's beyond my target price one. So I think my target price will be around here at two point two three. Yeah, region. Okay, so I I, I need to re refer back to my report again. So but. Uh, given today, I'm quite I'm quite glad that um, actually Sam Court actually woke up. Okay, but Sam Marine is the next tricky one. So Sam Marine, uh, U shape recovery, but um, uh, I think the next I think we'll have a pullback to zero point one nine zero or a deeper retracement to zero point one seven five before a rebound. Okay, so uh, this U shape, uh, this like U U curve thingy. Uh, was a good sign, but until this uh, candle appear, it appeared to be very strong bullish initially, but uh, price was got, got beaten down. So uh, we need to look for uh, the new uh, new data point to, to determine, okay? Okay, let's see, SPH, okay, DS6, okay, uh, last one before I plan my time to week one for the uh, for the S, uh, SGX uh, question. So uh, SPH uh, gone up a lot, golden cross cluster over here. Uh, but however, I think if you want to see a sustained rally, uh, $1.79 to $1.73 support zone should be well supported. If not, uh, we will not uh, consider any effect of uh, any more upside. So yeah, uh, that's it. Okay, then what's your view of sell in May go away? This one I'll answer, because of you can't want to trade this one, I'll answer in my US webinar. So if you're interested, hop on to it. All right, thank you. Yeah, Erin, let me just, just quickly run through. Uh, uh, just for your reference, if you sell in May, then you probably sold DBS at $20, then six months later is $28. Uh, again, we're not saying it's, it's right or wrong, but I think, the, uh, there are some studies that show that actually sell you buy in me is probably make more money. But anyway, uh, you, you know that the logic of sell in me, right? That means you are saying that the planetary movements have effect on the stock market, which I, I mean I do not know how true that is, but but something to consider. But 
I think in May, I was just looking, I think DBS share price was $20, just for your reference. Yeah, thanks. Uh, okay, so uh, the last one I think I'll do for Capricorp before I hand over the week one. So uh, the flag, uh, there's a gap up on for Capricorp. So Capricorp, I think I'm, we are aging closer to the target price uh, of $6.01 or even beyond at $6.12, uh, which uh, one, of my, one of our senior analysts, um, Darren's, his target price for Capricorp would be $6.12. Okay, so yeah. Uh, Sync post Matt Tech. Matt Tech, uh, no, 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 uh, no comments. Uh, Sync Tech, I've shared. Uh, Yang Tzu Jiang, I've shared. Uh, Daily Farm, uh, no comments at the moment. I've looked through the chart already. So, yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so uh, pass my time to Wee Kwong. Uh, Wee Kwong to you. Hello. Okay, uh, not sure whether my, my, my camera is showing myself, but never mind. Uh, that's not the point. Uh, okay, so there's a question on SGX whether there's any chance of a pullback for SGX and uh, what's up with SGX. Uh, I think today they had a quite a strong uh, price movement. So maybe uh, Weiren would like to do the TA later. But um, just, to, just to talk a little bit about SGX, uh, I think um, a lot of people were a little bit skeptical on whether SGX um, previously, they were able to sustain their... Uh, sorry, just give a moment. Yeah, okay. So a lot of people, I think they were previously a little bit skeptical on whether SGX was able to sustain their trading volumes and activity uh, that they saw actually last year due to the volatility from COVID-19. And over the past few months, uh, I think from January to March, what we have seen from the data that was um, uh, released by SGX is that they are able to do so. And even, um, even uh, for March itself, if you compare year on year, of course, it is a very huge fall from a year ago to the volatility last year. But the numbers that came out if you take it in isolation, you just don't take it, because uh, last year was a very high base. Remove all this base effect, it is still a growth. Like the TDAV and SDAV is almost like uh, third highest in historical. So it does goes to show that um, they are able to sustain their trading volumes on the stock exchange itself and, this, and also the derivatives market. So this is something that I think um, will be um, good for them in, over the new uh, financial year. And also because of their contribution from the other businesses that they have acquired over the past year. So something to, to take note of, um, it is still um, lower than our target price. Our target price for SGX is above $11. So that's something for you to consider. And they are still a, a very, they still have a lot of potential to continue growing, especially if you talk about, uh, you know, uh, the recent talks of poten potentially listing uh, as specs as well. So that is uh, some growth potential for SGX there. Yeah, and anyway, for, for SGX, I think uh, if Grab does a secondary listing, it's quite meaningful because I, I think there could be other unicorns that would also want to list. So maybe C could list and, and, and once that starts, then maybe the other unicorns in Singapore could also list. So, so that could be one, that's where maybe people are kind of speculating too. Again, you know, all this speculation, I mean, you can't, can't verify anything, but but if, if grab listing is quite an eventful thing, because if they do that, then you open the door for others to come in. Yeah, hopefully, I mean, so at least Singapore market not so boring. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, I think um, earlier there was a question on uh, Yoma's fundamentals. Uh, the question was, um, has Yoma found a bottom based on um, TA as well as fundamentals? And also, I think there's a, qu there's a question below. Hang on, it kind of shifted. Uh, like there's a question below relating to the ASEAN meeting that, um, yeah, oh, uh, so what's your opinion on Yoma or Myanmar with the upcoming ASEAN meeting? Is it good or bad? So um, from my point of view, as in from a fundamental standpoint, uh, we, are, we are neutral on the counter. It's difficult to tell whether or not um, the stock has bottomed given that the situation in Myanmar is still quite fluid. So like, as you know, um, the coup is still ongoing and then the death toll, I think, um, it's still on the rise. The last count was, I think, around 730. And um, on the back of um, operational risk and um, also pressure to several ties with the junta, I think um, the recent news is that a South, a South Korean um, steelmaker has also decided to terminate a joint venture in Myanmar. So at, um, just answering both questions together, uh, with regards to the ASEAN meeting um, where the junta chief has announced that he'll be, att he'll be attending, um, honestly, it's also difficult to say whether or not there'll be a, a positive outcome, um, given that, 
I think by attending, okay, first of all, by attending, it's it's like a step forward, I guess. Um, as the junta is more willing to um engage with like um with its neighboring countries or neighbors. Uh, but according to I think um the unity government that is formed by the former leader just last week, um, it's also the 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 government that's supported by the people that um if the ASEAN is actually considering um action relating to Myanmar matters without the unity government, it's also difficult for Myanmar to achieve any headway um, yeah, in terms of progress as well, like progress to stop um, the coup. So all in all, I think it's hard to say that the worst is over. Yeah, so this is all from me. Uh, 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 Terence, when you have time, uh, uh, is there are some on Keppel Corp and Sam Corp. Okay, uh, let me just try uh, while waiting for Terence. Uh, there's this question, this uh, uh, good question. Is it possible to buy US spec during the IPO during using poems? Uh, I, I really don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm so sorry. It's, not, uh, it's, a, it's a good question, but maybe you might have to call our help desk or our dealers to help you on that. I really no, no idea. So sorry. To, yeah, but, but it's an interesting question. Uh, uh, let me answer uh, to Paul. The news report possible housing measures government intervention is the news priced in for Popnex and, and APEC. I don't think the news is going to be is priced in. Um, if they actually implement, uh, again, this is purely speculation, right? They'll probably be after the second quarter release of the price index. Uh, then then maybe, uh, no, Popnex and APEC will probably release their results. Uh, maybe Popnex or uh, their update or results on, uh, on the first quarter. So the numbers should be good, I mean, considering the transaction out there. But then, then you might worry that could be an overhang because of the, it's just too good that the government might come in and uh, and maybe move a bit on the TDSR. I don't think it would be the ABSD, but maybe the TDSR. Let's uh, tighten it a little bit. Again, all this is speculation. Uh, so, so, so please don't, don't, don't hold it on us. I mean, you know, we're just trying to speculate. Uh, we're not really sure, obviously. Yeah, I, I, but I just hope that it helps uh, everyone. Hello. Yeah, so I think there's a question on Keppel, uh, Keppel and Semcorp. I'll just uh, address the question on Semcorp Industries first. So for Semcorp Industries, we see them continuing to benefit from investments into this ESG trend. So that's why the momentum is actually quite strong. Uh, but there was some news about uh, uh, Semcorp this morning. Uh, there was news today that uh, its major customer, Eastman Chemical, uh, actually terminated its utility service agreement uh, with SAMCOP. But actually, one of the things that we note is this, this, this news is not new because they already announced this uh, in February this year during their full year 2020 results announcement. So the, the, the announcement today is, is, is just uh, the only, the only uh, thing that they didn't, didn't mention in their, their, their 2020 announcement was uh, the name of their customer. But we now know the name of their customer. Also in the announcement this morning is uh, and they also uh, highlighted that another customer uh, facility in the UK they are currently undergoing a one year restructuring. So this this together Eastman and this customer in the UK contributed about thirty million in FY twenty net profit. So to put things in perspective, this thirty million in FY twenty net profit accounts for twenty percent of their overall uh, FY twenty uh, net profit for. Uh, in continuing operations, so it's quite significant actually. Uh, we also see they also announced that they are also facing some headwinds uh, in Singapore and Vietnam uh, due to reducing tariffs as their power purchase agreement approaches expiry in twenty twenty four. So overall, the the news for Semcom not not that positive. Uh, so we 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 actually uh, remain cautious on that front, especially uh, due to the the multiple headwinds on their their earnings. Uh, so that's for for Semcom. Then for Keppel. Uh, they also had some announcement this morning, they, 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 uh, or, or Friday rather, uh, that their wholly owned, their, their Keppel shipyard, actually they, they say that it's in advanced discussions with Petrobras for a contract to build a floating uh, production, FPSO, the, the floating production storage and offloading vessel uh, in, in the, the fuel of Brazil. So uh, th this deal, uh, the, 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 their speculating is around 4.6 billion, so it's quite huge. Uh, but there's no, no def definitive agreement being reached so far. But we're positive on Keppel so far uh, because uh, we, we, we see Keppel as still trading below their book value. Uh, 
so we see we see the the this 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 announcement as being positive, especially for their their O and M segment. Yep, that's all for me. Thanks. Okay. Um. Uh, can the, I'll just run through the? Can you share with us the Philip Securities Research Investment Thesis for the coming IPO of Grab? Uh, I, I think we showed you, but anyway, uh, we we just just do a quick summary. I think we think near term, uh, we are a bit concerned because there's so many shares, so much shares coming out at uh, fifty million turning into four billion, and most of these shares, the lockup is one third of it can be released on the day itself. And you know the valuations or the the cost of these shares are, you know the, the last time the valuations was like ten to fourteen billion. That's the most expensive block of shares. And now I'm not even sure the convertible preference shares. What is their cost? So I'm just a bit worried that there's a lot of shares and most of those shares their cost is far 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 lower than the ten dollars or even the twelve dollars. So I'm a bit wary on that part. Of course, longer term grab is a like I said, they lost ten point four billion. Uh, yeah, you lose ten point four billion, you can dominate a lot of things. So, so and then they just raise some money. So the cr crucial thing is, uh, can they dominate? And there's a good chance that uh, their they super app can kind of dominate a lot of services. Uh, again, uh, this is just a uh, my own guess. Uh, yeah, uh, I hope that that helps. Uh. So longer term it looks okay, but near term I would be a bit more cautious. Uh, what, uh how, can you display the first slide of the macroeconomics? Uh, Vivian, can you show that first slide? Uh, the, yeah, the. Oh, uh, okay, okay, yeah, this one. Uh, the next question. Uh, Air Asia has dropped a lot recently. Any medium fundamental views from the team? Uh, so, sorry, uh, we don't really cover uh, Air Asia. Can't can't really help you on that. Uh, apologies. Uh, Matt Tech, what is the research current view? Uh, wow, this one. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I can't. No, I'm not really sure how to. You know, Medtech selling gowns and and masks. I mean, masks anyone can do it, But I think gowns is the one that is there's a bit more of a of a barrier, and they deal a lot with government. A lot of unknowns for us because we're not sure uh, how how long this government deals. So they're doing well because they've become a strategic supplier to a lot of government agencies. But a lot of unknowns for us. That's why we can't really help you on that. Just that my biggest unknown is. Is how much more do the governments need to stock up, and is this just like a you know a one off a short term spurt? So that's why we we, we got more questions than answers for you. So sorry, we're not very can't give you a good answer for medtech. Yeah, apologies. Uh, okay, another question. Uh, if Grab make a secondary listing in Singapore, what's the market cap big enough to be in STI? Or oh, I think Grab will be bigger. Grab will be at forty billion, bigger than DBS, obviously. It's probably like a DBS. Plus something else, uh, yeah. Maybe one and a half banks in there, maybe. Yeah. Or they they'll definitely be can be on the STI. I mean, like the so liquid, yeah, forty billion US. Yeah. Uh, I hope that, that that answers it. Uh, when will the merger take place? The D spec to trade as Grab. Um, uh, in the slides, they are they mentioned nineteen July. So nineteen July is when this thing become D spec. Uh, that means technically it becomes a Grab. Uh, grab stock, I mean, yeah, grab holding company. Uh, um, okay, how do you see the impact of Thai Bev? I, I think we kind of answered that. When is the fastest you see the IPO being revived? Uh, I think if they can get 40 times PE, I think they'll revive it. Uh, again, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm not, not, not totally sure. A any potential concerns? I, I think, it, uh, you know, because they acquired Sabeco at quite a high PE, I I've forgotten the amount, but it's I think higher than 30 times. So uh I'm not and because I, I don't blame them because you know this type of controlling block of shares is you can't get this anytime. I mean this is a very very hard to get such a huge block in controlling shares. So I can understand, but then to kind of sell it back to the market at such high value, uh, maybe if Sabeco's uh, growth comes back when the pandemic dies down and then the growth comes back in Sabeco, then maybe. That could be a better time for them to be to do another listing. Uh, again, uh, we 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 are just kind of stipulating here. Not very sure, but because as you know, uh, Sabeco's results wasn't good to the last uh, last year because of the pandemic and there was all these rumors of of 
like who owns the 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 the, the company and, and so forth. So there was a lot of negative publicity, and also Sabeko was hit by drunk driving. So so now a good time to list based on historicals. So maybe they will wait for stronger growth trajectory for Sabeko. Uh, I mean that's uh, our guess. I think. Oh, why is Sinopharm suddenly moving? Uh, we don't cover apologies. Yeah. Uh, Viren, I'm not sure you want to take any more uh, because the rest could be technical. Uh, okay, let me just answer this one. Uh, uh, oh, okay, uh, Capital Land, anything on Capital Land, uh, Natalie? Yeah, let me okay. let me try to find the question. Uh, you can read out the question for me. Oh no, just your view on Maple Tree Industrial Trust and also uh, what's the situation on Capital Land? <laughs> okay, so for Maple Tree Industrial Trust, um, currently trading at about six point uh one point six four times price to book. Uh, of course, this compares to the their other peers, which for example our our preference uh, as we do not cover Maple Tree Industrial our. Preference actually is um, Ascenders read, which is now currently trading at 1.4 times price to book. So that once again is uh, in comparison to Maple Tree trading at 1.64 times. And of course, because Maple Tree does have almost 40% or 38% in data centers. So we also reference um, Capital DC's uh, price to book, which is about 2.2 times price to book. Yeah, so that's it. Of course, there's um, the, I think the outlook for the industrials, as mentioned, is uh, is still relatively optimistic on the back of a lot of uh, recovering recovering macro macro data. Like um, so, that will of course uh, buoy buoy up the the rents for the industrial space. Um, overall, I think at this entry, it's still it's still considered um, at one of the low lower lower price levels for for maple tree industrial. So if if you prefer if you if you are interested in mint then uh, you can definitely look at entering at this price. Otherwise, um, our, our preference is, of course, um, Ascenders Week. Um, in terms of capital land, uh, yes, um, after following the news of the merger, the price has uh, sort of uh, been trading around the 2.75 to 2.78 range. Um, I think it is, for, for now, we expect the price to slowly trend towards the $4.10 um, implied consideration as time pass as time progresses um, to and and more details for the merger is released uh, yeah but nonetheless as, as you may know we do like this uh, proposed the merger uh, we think that it will we think that it will definitely help to lift the prices for capital land or rather the new entity which is um, CR, CRM Kim. Okay, I'll just do one more. Uh, I, then I think there could be one goal, and then we can co conclude uh, if if that's that's okay. Uh, pardon my ignorance, but uh, how market will be like with the? Let me just read out the question. Sorry. Uh, pardon my ignorance. How market will be like with the current issues on South China seas here with us, with US and China? Will there be a crash? Uh, you know, US and China each one have nuclear weapons, so if if there's any incident in Southeast Asia, the market will definitely crash. I mean, yeah, I got new, you, yeah. You want to throw stone at your neighbor's house, you make sure your house got no windows. So, but because both of them have nuclear weapons, so if there's any incident or thing, or oh, the market will crash quite quite badly, obviously. Yeah, because the worst case scenario could be pricey. I, know. I think we all know what that is. <laughs> yeah, but but thanks for, for your question. Uh, okay. Um, Okay, there's, there's one question on, uh, am I not wrong to say stocks like uh, Jardin, Jardin Cycle and, and Carriage? Um, so I'm just trying to, look, so sorry for, for uh, Jardin Cycle and Carriage or Astra Dairy Farm, Hong Kong, Langtai Beverage are highly exposed to search in COVID Indonesia besides the usual suspects. Uh, they, they, they are, yeah, I mean, just to cut short, uh, they, they definitely are because they are reliant on consumer spending and, and uh, I, Astra, I need to check because we, we actually have the data on car sales in Indonesia. That's like we never flag because no one asked, but we will try to maybe try and flag that out next time so that y'all can have a look. It just have a flash. Yeah, but uh, but definitely, I mean, if there's COVID, like we said, no Philippines and all that, that obviously will affect them because then there's lockdown and it will affect consumer demand. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, um, Vera, I think I'll leave it to you. Uh, 
there could be some on goal and I think there's a few on goal. It's up to you if you want to answer. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Okay, no, uh, no problem, Paul. So um, let me do a few more uh, technical questions. So um, right, okay, so right now, Jardin, I was checking something when Paul was mentioning it. So I'll do AEM and then followed by Riverstone and then uh, after that, go and then uh, after that, I'll be done. So um, for AEM, okay, uh, you can see that um, price actually was, uh, is trending uh, uh, higher and then after that, it crashed. And then rebound. So, uh, if you look at that, uh, from the high to the low, from the low to the high, actually, uh, this is uh, around the fifty percent mark, and then there's some sort of like correction uh, going on. So, um, I think price is going to find its rebound and support at three point nine eight, and then uh, followed by the upside. Um, I think after that, the the upside recovery will be actually uh, much more lower. And oh, sorry, then, uh, can you share your the technical screen? I, I, okay, sorry. Uh, let me see. Is it uh, okay? I think I think. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, I think yeah. Okay, a anybody, uh, anybody can see my screen now. So sorry, I I was post share and then I don't know what caused it. Yeah, so, can see now. Okay, so um, I repeat some of the AEM that I repeat just now. So okay, so AEM basically has a strong upside after breaking out uh breaking out the falling wedge um or. December last year, um, I think we shall share it. Um, prices actually uh, has a has a has a correction, and then after that, uh, price found its rebound at three point six three to three point seven two. Uh, however, right now I think that uh, price is going to has uh, price is currently like testing a support three point nine. Uh, not very strong. Um, uh, but let's see if can break this uh resistance level at four point two seven for four point three one. Uh, however, if it managed to break, I think $4.60 will be another round of like selling again. So hence, I won't be that, uh, that particular about it. So if it that happen, then this will be the, uh, the pattern that will happen. And then you'll go on, on, on to a prolonged range, All right? So next one will be uh, Riverstone. Riverstone, same as what I've shared with uh, Top Glove. Uh, this resistance between um, 145 to 1.59 uh, is highly contested. So hence, um, I think the downtrend will be still ongoing. So this one, if this one, if 1.59 fail to break, then we can, we are, we are quite sure that uh, there will be some more downside to the support at 5, 0 0.195 to $1. All right, so gold. Um, gold recovered. Okay, so uh, we covered and then uh, and then but I think go right uh will have this kind of like movement, so it's like uh this and this and this and this before it actually uh goes up. So this is a longer longer period time frame uh for go I'm looking for. Uh, you see that it broke off the double bottom, uh and then I uh, broke above and then after that. Uh, but the price remain weak over here. So hence, uh, I'm, 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 I will stay put on gold for now. All right. Um, hi, Paul. Uh, do you wish to take any more questions? Yeah, before I end off, I'm just like trying Yeah, I, I think we've taken quite a, uh, a number and uh, apologize if, if we miss some of your, your, your questions. Oh, yeah, there's one more. Uh, are there Singapore listed company webinars planned in the near future? Yeah, we... we we always try to plan, but sometimes because of the blackout periods, uh, that's why you can see sometimes there's like virtually no, no webinars. Uh, was, uh, but we will continue. Like, we will definitely continue and, and hope everyone who has time to register for it. Yeah. Okay. I, I think that's it. I think we can we can we can end it because you have another session, right? Yeah. So so thank thanks everybody for taking your time to listen to us and for your questions and apologies if we miss some because uh, there's quite a, a lot and I hope to see you next week and thank thank you everybody. Yeah.